Book Three, the Book of the Assembly. But as the nation, beset betwixt doom and a shameful surrender, waited mute for a voice that could lead and a heart to encourage, up in the silence deep, Leocoon rose up, far heard, heard by the gods in their calm, and heard by men in their passion. Cloud-haired, clad in mystic red, flamboyant, sombre, Priam's son Leocon, fate-darkened seer of Apollo. As when the soul of the ocean arises, wrapped in the dawning, and mid the rocks and the foam uplifting the voice of its musings, opens the chant of its turbulent harmonies, so rose the far-born voice of Leocon, soaring mid columns of Ilion's glories, claiming the earth and the heavens for the field of its confident rumour. Trojans, deny your hearts to the easeful flutings of Hades. Live, O nation, he thundered forth and Troy's streets and her pillars sent back their fierce response. Restored to her leonine spirits, Ilion rose in her agora, filling the heavens with shoutings, bearing a name to the throne of Zeus in her mortal defiance. As when a sullen calm of the heavens discourages living, nature and man feel the pain of the lightnings repressed in their bosoms, dangerous and dull is the air, then, suddenly strung from the anguish, Zeus of the thunders starts into glories, releasing his storm voice. Earth exults in the kiss of the rain and the life-giving laughters. So from the silence broke forth the thunder of Troia arising. Fiercely she turned from prudence and wisdom and turned back to greatness, casting her voice to the heavens from the depths of her fathomless spirit. Raised by those clamours, triumphant once more on this scene of his greatness, tool of the gods, but he deemed of his strength as a leader in nature, took for his own a voice that was given and dreamed that he fashioned fate that fashions us all. Leocon stood mid the shouting, leaned on the calm of an ancient pillar. In eyes self-consuming, Kindle the flame of the prophet that blinds at once and illumines. Quivering thought besieged lips and shaken locks of the lion. Lifted his gaze, the storm-led enthusiast. Then, as the shouting tired of itself at last disappeared in the bosom of silence, once more he started erect and his voice saw the hearts of his hearers swept like ocean's impatient cry when it calls from its surges, ocean loud with a thought sublime in its measureless marching. Each man felt his heart like foam in the rushing of waters. Ilion is vanquished then. She abases her grandiose spirit, mortal found in the end to the gods, and the Greeks, and Antenna, and when a barbarous chieftain's menace and insolent mercy bring here their pride to insult the columned spirit of Ilus, Trojans have sat and feared. For a man has arisen and spoken, one whom the gods in their anger have hired. Since the Argive prevailed not, armed with his strength and his numbers, in Troia they sought for her slayer gathered their wiles in a voice, and they chose a man, famous and honoured, summoned eighty to aid and corrupted the heart of Antenna. Flute of the breath of the hell witch, always he scatters among you doubt, affliction and weakness, chilling the hearts of the fighters. Always his voice, with its cadenced and subtle possession for evil, breaks the constant will, and maims the impulse heroic. 
Therefore, while yet her heroes fight and her arms are unconquered, Troy in your hearts is defeated. The souls of your fathers have heard you dallying, shamefast, with vileness, lured by the call of dishonor. Such is the power Zeus gave to the winged words of a mortal. Foiled in his will, disowned by the years that stride on forever, yet in the frenzy gold of his greed and his fallen ambition, doom from heaven he calls down on his countrymen. Trojan, a base destroy his country, extolling her enemies, blessing her slayers. Such are the gods Antenna has made in his heart's own image, that if one evil man have not way for his greed and his longing, cities are doomed and kings must be slain and a nation must perish. But from the mind of the free and the brave, I will answer thy bodings, gold-hungry raven of Troy, who croaked from thy nest at her princes, only one doom irreparable, Treads down the soul of a nation. Only one downfall endures. Tis the ruin of greatness and virtue. Mourning when freedom departs from the life and the heart of a people. Into her room comes creeping the mind of the slave. And it poisons manhood and joy. And the voice to lying is trained. And subjection easy feels to the neck of man who is next to the godheads. Not of the fire am I terrified, not of the sword and its slaying. Vileness of men appalls me, baseness I fear, and its voices. What can man suffer, direr, or worse than enslaved from a victor, boons to accept? to take safety and ease from the foe and the stranger, fallen from the virtue stern that heaven permits to a mortal? Death is not keener than this, nor the slaughter of friends and our dear ones. Out and alas, earth's greatest are earth, and they fail in the testing, conquered by sorrow and doubt, fate's hammerers, fires of her furnace. God in their souls they renounce and submit to their clay and its promptings. Else could the heart of Troy have recoiled from the loom of the shadow, cast by Achilles' spear, or shrunk at the sound of his car wheels? Now he has graven an oath austere in his spirit unpliant, victor at last to constrain in his tried the walls of Apollo, burning Troy ere he sleeps. It is the vow of a high-crested nature. Shall it break ramparted Troy? Yea, the soul of a man too is mighty, more than the stone and the mortar. Troy had a soul once, O Trojans, firm as her god-built ramparts, and by the spears overtaken, when Sarpedon fell and Zeus averted his visage, Xanthus read to the sea ran sobbing with bodies of Trojans. When in the day of the silence of heaven, the far-glancing helmet seized from the ways of the fight and panic slew with Achilles, hosts who were left unshepherded, pale at the fall of their greatest. Godlike, Troy lived on. Do we speak mid a city's ruins? Lo, she confronts her heavens, as when Tross and Laomedon ruled her. All now is changed. These mutter and sigh to you. All now is ended. Strength has renounced you. Fate has finished the thread of her spinning. Hector is dead. He walks in the shadows. Troilus fights not. Resting his curls on the asphodel, he has forgotten his country. Strong Sarpedon lies in Bellerophon's city, sleeping Memnon is slain, and the blood of Rhesus has dried on the Troad. All of the giant Asius sums in the handful of ashes. Miserable are these things. A heart still keep all the pain of them treasured, hard though they grow by use, and iron caskets of sorrow. Hear me yet, O fainters in wisdom snared by your pathos. Know this iron world we live in, 
where hell casts its shadow. Blood and grief are the ransom of men for the joys of their transience. For we are mortals bound in our strength and beset in our labor. This is our human destiny. Every moment of living toil and loss have gained in the constant siege of our bodies. Men must sow earth with their hearts and their tears that their country may prosper. Earth who bore and devours us that life may be born from our remnants. Then shall the sacrifice gather its fruits when the war shout is silent. Nor shall the blood be in vain that our mother has felt on her bosom. Nor shall the seed of the mighty fail where death is the sower. Still from the loins of the mother eternal are heroes engendered. Still Diaphobus shouts in the war front, trampling the Argives. Strong Aeneas' far-born voice is heard from our ramparts. Paris' hands are swift, and his feet in the chases of Ares. Lo, when deserted we fight by Asia's soon-wearied peoples, men in great who enjoyed the protection and loathed the protector. Heaven has sent us replacing a continent, Penthesilia. Lo, has the heart of Achaea sunk since it shook at her war cry? Ajax has bit at the dust. It is all he shall have of the Troad. Tall Meriones lies and measures his portion of booty. Who is the fighter in Ilion, thrills not rejoicing, to hearken even her name on unwarlike lips? Much more in the melee, shout of the daughter of battles, omnipotent Penthesilia. If there were none but these only, if hosts came not surging behind them, young men burning-eyed to outdare all the deeds of their elders, each in his beauty a Troilus, each in his valour a Hector, yet were the measures poised in the equal balance of Ares. Who then compels you, O people unconquered, to sink down, abjuring all that was Troy? For, O, oh, if she yield, let her use not forever one of her titles. Shame not the shades of Teucer and Ilus, soil not Tross. Are you awed by the strength of the swift foot Achilles? Is it a sweet allure in the cadenced voice of Antenna? Or are you weary of time and the endless roar of the battle? Wearier still are the Greeks. Their eyes look out o'er the waters, nor with the flight of their spears is the wing of their hopes towards Troia. Dull are their hearts. They sink from the war cry and turn from the spear stroke, sullenly dragging backwards, desiring the parts of the ocean, dreaming of hearts that are far, and the children growing to manhood who are small infant faces still in the thoughts of their fathers. Therefore these call you to yield, lest they wake and behold in the dawn light all Poseidon whitening, lean to the west in his waters, thick with the sails of the Greeks, departing, beaten to Hellas. Who is it calls? Antenor the statesman, Antenor the patriot, thus who loves his country and worships the soil of his fathers. Which of you loves like him, Troia? Which of the children of heroes yearns for the touch of a yoke on his neck and desires the aggressor? If there be any so made by the gods in the nation of Ilus, leaving this city which free men have founded, free men have dwelt in, far on the beach let him make his couch in the tents of Achilles, not in this mighty Ilion, not with this lioness fighting, guarding the lair of her young and roaring back at her hunters. We who are souls descended from Ilus and seeds of his making, other-hearted shall march from our gates to answer Achilles. What shall this ancient Ilion welcome the day of the conquered? She who was head of the world? Shall she live in the guard of the Hellene, cherished as slave girls are, who are taken in war by their captors? 
Europe shall walk in our streets with the pride and the gait of the victor? Greeks shall enter our homes and prey on our mothers and daughters? This antenna desires, and this Eucalligan favors? Traitors, whether it is cowardice drives or the skeptic of virtue, cold-blooded age or gold insatiably tempts from its coffers, pleading for safety from foreign hands and the sack and the plunder. Leave them, my brothers, spare the baffled hypocrites. Failure, sharpest, shall torture their hearts when they know that still you are Trojans. Silence, O reason of man, for a voice from the gods has been uttered. Dardanus, hearken the sound divine that comes to you mounting out of the solemn ravines from the mystic seat on the tripod. Phoebus, the master of truth, has promised the earth to our peoples. Children of Zeus, rejoice, for the Olympian brows have nodded regal over the world. In earth's rhythm of shadow and sunlight, storm is the dance of the locks of the god descending to greatness. Zeus, who with secret compulsion orders the ways of our nature, veiled in events he lives, and working disguised in the mortal, builds our strength by pain, and an empire is born out of ruins. Then, if the tempest be loud, and the thunderbolt leaping incessant shatters the roof, if the lintels flame at last, and each cornice shrieks with the pain of the blast, if the very pillars totter, Keep yet your faith in Zeus. Hold fast to the word of Apollo. Not by a little pain and not by a temperate labor trained is the nation chosen by Zeus for a dateless dominion. Long must it labor rolled in the foam of the fathomless surges. Often neighbor with death and air heiress grow firm to its banners, feel on the pride of its capital, Tread of the triumphing victor, hear the barbarian knock at its gates, or the neighboring foeman glad of the transient smile of his fortune, suffer insulting. They, the nation eternal, brook their taunts who must perish. Heavy as toils they must bear, they must wrestle with fate and her titans. And when some leader returns from the battle soul of his thousands, crushed by the hammers of God, Yet never despair of their country. Dread not the ruin, fear not the storm blast. Yield not, O Trojans. Zeus shall rebuild. Death ends not our days. The fire shall not triumph. Death, I have faced it. Fire, I have watched it climb in my vision over the timeless domes and over the rooftops of Priam. But I have looked beyond and have seen the smile of Apollo. After her glorious centuries, after her worldwide triumphs, if near her ramparts outnumbered she fights by the nations forsaken, lonely again on her hill, by her streams and her meadows and beaches, once where she reveled, shaped to the tramp of her countless invaders, Testings are these from the God, for fate severe, like a mother, teaches our wills by disaster, and strikes down the props that would weaken. Fate and the thought on high that is wiser than yearnings of mortals. Troy has arisen before, but from ashes, not shame, not surrender. Souls that are true to themselves are immortal. The soulless forever lingers, helpless in Hades, a shade among shades, disappointed. Now is the God in my bosom mighty, compelling me, Trojans. Now I release what my spirit has kept, and it saw in its vision. Nor will be silent for jibe of the cynic or sneer of the traitor. Troy shall triumph. 
Hear, O ye peoples, the word of Apollo. Hear it and tremble, O Greece. In thy youth and the dawn of thy future, rather forget while thou canst, but the gods in their hour shall remind thee. Tremble, O nations of Asia, falls to the greatness within you. Troy shall surge back on your realms with the sword and the yoke of the victor. Troy shall triumph, though nations conspire and the gods lead her foemen. Fate that is born of the spirit is greater than they and will shield her. Foemen shall help her with war. Her defeats shall be victory's moulders. Walls that restrain shall be rent. She shall rise out of sessions unsettled. Oceans shall be her walls at the end and the desert her limit. Indus shall send to her envoys. Her eyes shall look northward from Thule. She shall enring all the coasts with her strength like the kingly Poseidon. She shall overvault all the lands with her rule like the limitless azure. Seizing from speech, Leocon, girt with the shouts of a nation, lapsed on his seat like one seized and abandoned and weakened. Nor ended only in iron applause, but throughout, with a stormy approval, Eris broke from the hearts of his people in ominous thunder. Savage and dire was the sound, like a wild beast, tracked out and hunted, wounded, yet trusting to tear out the entrails live of its hunters. Savage and cruel, and a threatening doom, to the foe and opponent. Yet, when the shouting sank at last, you Callaghan rose up, trembling with age and with wrath, and in accents hurried and piping, faltered a senile fierceness forth on the maddened assembly. Ah! It is even so far that you dare, O oh, you children of Priam, favourites vile of a people sent mad by the gods. And thou risest, dark Leocon, prating of heroes and spurning as cowards, smiting for traitors the aged and wise, who were grey when they spawned thee. Of destruction, main of mischief, ah, Spur us with courage, thou, who hast never prevailed against even the feeblest Achaean. Rather twice hast thou raced in the rout to the ramparts for shelter, leading the panic, and shrieked as thou ranst to the foemen for mercy, who were a mile behind thee. O oh, matchless and wonderful racer, safely counsel to others the pride and the firmness of heroes, Thou wilt not die in the battle, for even swiftest Achilles could not o'ertake thee, I ween, nor wind-footed Penthesilia. Mask of a prophet, heart of a coward, tongue of a trickster, timeless Ilion, thou alone ruinest, helped by the furies. I, you Callaghan, first will rend off the mask from thee, traitor. For I believe thee suborned by the cynic wiles of Odysseus, and thou conspirest to sack this Troy with the greed of the Cretan. Hasting, unstayed, her pursued like a brook that scolds amid pebbles, voicing anger's shrill. For the people, astonished, were silent. Long he pursued not. A shouting broke. From that stupor of fury, men sprang pale to their feet and hurled out menaces lethal. All that assembly swayed like a forest swept by the storm wind. Obstinate, straining his age dimmed eyes, Eucalagan, trembling worse yet with anger, clamored feebly back at the people, whelmed in their roar. Unheard was his voice. Like a swimmer in surges lost, yet he spoke. 
but the anger grew in the throats of the people, lion-voiced, hurting the heart with sound and daunting the nature, till, from some stalwart hand, a javelin, whistling and vibrant, missing the silvered head of the senator, rang disappointed out on the distant wall of a house by the side of the market. Not even then would the old man hush or yield to the tempest, wagging his hoary beard and shifting his aged eyeballs. Tossing his hands, he stood. But Antenor seized him, and Aito dragged him down on his seat, though he strove, and chid him and silenced. Seize, O friend, for the gods have won. It were easier, piping high with thy aged treble, to alter the rage of the ocean than to obey this people stirred by Leocorn. Leave now effort unhelpful. Wrap thy days in a mantle of silence. Give to the gods their will and dry-eyed wait for the ending. So now the old men ceased from their strife with the gods and with Troia. Cowed by the storm of the people's wrath, they desisted from hoping. But though the roar long swelled, like the sea when the winds have subsided, one man yet rose up, unafraid, and beckoned for silence. Not of the aged, but ripe in his look and ruddy of visage, stalwart and bluff and short-limbed, Halimus, son of Antenor. Forward he stood from the press, and the people fell silent and listened. For he was ever first in the melee and loved by the fighters. He, with a smile, began. Come, friends, debate is soon ended, if there is right but of lungs, and you argue with javelins. Wisdom rather call to your aid in this dangerous hour of your fortunes. Not to exalt Leocon, too much praising his swiftness, Trojans, I rise. For some are born brave with a spear in the war car, others bold with a tongue, nor equal gifts unto all men Zeus has decreed, who guides his world in a round that is devious, carried this way and that, like a ship that is tossed on the waters. Why should we rail then at one who is lame by the force of Cronion? Not by his will is he lame. He would race if he could with the swiftest, Yet is the halt man no runner, nor, friends, must you rise up and slay me, if I should say of this priest, he is neither Sarpedon nor Hector. <laughs> 